Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to the dumbest lottery winners of all time. I'm still a bit ill and I've also had to get headphones because my AirPods and my other earphones weren't connected to my PC. The Bluetooth has just messed up suddenly and now I can't connect my headphones or my earphones. So I've now got to have these wired ones, which is probably why you're looking at like, oh, why is he wearing those? Oh yeah, whatever. So I had a few days where I couldn't record because my earphones, I physically couldn't listen to anything. And because I was feeling so ill, I just didn't go out. But, and also, yeah, my phone's broken as well. I've just not had luck, mate. I don't know what's happening. My phone's now not working. I've got to go on holiday. I say holiday, a little, I guess, getaway for a few days. And I've not got a working phone. And if I'm in another country without a working phone, I don't know what I'm going to do. But, yeah, hopefully I'll get that fixed. But hopefully you're all doing well as well. I apologise for being away for so long. Um... If I do cough a bit again, I am still, I've still got a cough. I'm calling my doctors today because I, I don't want to be sick when I'm on holiday and I'm away for a little bit. So it's not looking good right now. But yeah, we're going to jump into this video. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. And let's just check this out. It's from Sunny, Sunny, it's from Sunny V2, which is one of those channels that I like reacting to. And just watching in my own time. So yeah, let's jump into this <laughs> and see. <laughs> Um, the dumbest lottery winners of all time. From accidentally throwing a three million pound lottery ticket in the bin <laughs> to spending uh, an entire steam, sixteen man. million dollar prize. How are you throwing away a lottery ticket without checking it properly? Surely, if you buy a lottery ticket, you know what's what's good and what's not. Although there's different types, isn't there? There's the the the, the lottery tickets where it's on the TV and then you sort of pick random numbers yourself. Maybe you listen to it wrong or something, but. How are you gonna do that, man? Prize in under 90 days. These are the absolute dumbest lottery winners of all time, beginning with Jose Antonio Quartok, who almost lost his entire lottery fortune after getting someone else to claim the money for him. Donut. You see, when Jose won the $750,000 jackpot back in 2010, he was living in the US illegally, so Jose asked his boss to claim the prize oh. on his behalf, as he feared he couldn't claim the money without potentially facing legal trouble and deportation. This worked out perfectly, until Jose's boss began to falsely state that he was the one who had actually purchased the ticket. Take no, no. I mean, it said he almost lost his money, so I'm assuming he managed to get it somehow, but... I can understand his point of view in this to be Taking legal action against him. his boss was risky, given Jose wasn't supposed to be in the country at all. However, given he had security camera footage of him purchasing the ticket, Jose did so and was able to prove that he was the rightful owner to the $750,000 prize. Only $250,000 this went to taxes, another $250,000 was spent on court fees, and throughout the legal process, Jose was jailed for drunk driving and was deported back to uh... Guatemala as soon as he won the court case. However, at least Jose Antonio Quartok got to keep some he got 250k and if he's in guatemala and I, don't, I guess he's still there that's some good money for a country like that obviously in the us it's good money but if you're in a country like that you've got that's like having two million maybe more in like the us you know so He's, he's still done quite well, to be fair to him. Some of his winnings, as Denise Rossi wasn't so fortunate. Oh, when Denise, Denise won a jackpot of 1.3 million back in 1996, she'd been married to Thomas Rossi for over 25 years, oh. yet their relationship was apparently lacking in transparency, as Denise didn't tell her husband about the win, and instead filed for divorce only 11 days after buying oh the lucky my. ticket. Imagine being that... In such a fake relationship, you win the lottery, and you're like, I don't want anyone else to have this, I want this all for myself. What the hell all those years for then? You've spent all your years with this person and you just decided after winning a bit of money that you're done. I was like, afraid what? to tell Thomas because I knew he would try to take the money away from me. I went to the lottery commission I mean, office and mad. told them I was married but contemplating divorce. They told me to file before I got my first check, which I did. Denise was initially successful in hiding the money from her now ex-husband, as for a whole two years after their divorce, Thomas had no idea that Denise had ever won the lottery. However, in May 1999, a letter was sent to Thomas's home address, asking if Denise was interested in a lump sum buyout of her lottery winnings. This was the first Thomas knew about the lottery prize. He confirmed that Denise was a winner with the California lottery, and given they were still married at the time of the win, Thomas launched a lawsuit stating that he was entitled to half of the prize money. Oh, the judge specifically no. found that Denise's failure to disclose the lottery winnings constituted fraud, oppression, and malice, and as a result, the trial court awarded Thomas 100% of the That is brutal. Oh my day. So after trying to hide it and stuff, you've now lost every single penny that you won. See, that's a bit fucked. I wouldn't say you should go that far, but at the same time, I mean, to do what she done without saying anything, it's obviously she's trying to keep all the money for herself, but god damn. 
That is not a slap on the wrist. That's a slap in the face, mate. And that's more than a slap in the face. You're probably... Like, I can't imagine how the, how she's going to feel for the rest of her life knowing that she's lost all that money because she tried to keep all the money. The lottery winnings, which left Denise with less than nothing, considering she also had to pay for her own legal fees. However, Denise's loss of 1.3 million was still nothing in comparison to Evelyn Adams. Dubbed the luckiest woman in America, Evelyn Adams became the first person in human history to win the lottery twice, initially for 3.9 million what? in October 1985, before winning another 1.4 million only you four months later. With the probability of this win being approximately one in 17 3 trillion, Evelyn seemed to realize that she had no lottery luck left by stating that she was going to quit playing and instead began to buy various businesses, including the convenience store where the lucky tickets had been purchased. While you could argue that this was a smart move, Evelyn still hadn't fixed her gambling problem and instead of buying more lottery tickets, she instead took the rest of her winnings to the Atlantic City casinos where she lost her entire remaining. I understand gambling addiction is like a big problem and I'm not trying to look down on it, right? But for any human, the first, just say 2.5 million, half of it, you can spend whatever you want on the other half. Just try and invest it in homes and property because then you've just got money that you can fall back on. You've got a decent income monthly. Say you rent it out or you sell it or whatever. You rent it out for a bit. Say everyone, you've got eight different properties and you're renting them out all out for 700 a month. You're guaranteed to get a certain amount of money, which is a good amount to survive or whatever. But like, you just decide to spend it all on this. I don't get it. It's crazy to me. If I got a million, I'm just putting it 90% of it into property or whatever. Like, I want to just make sure I'm set out and you've got money to rely on, to fall on for like every month. You just get this little bit of money. And it's just like, God damn, people don't even see it like that. They just want to, they want to spend it all on the crazy stuff straight away, which I guess buying a house is crazy, but you know what I mean. Fortune to the slot machines. Without any money left, her businesses failed one after the <laughs> other. And by 2012, Evelyn was living in a trailer park while stating to the media, winning the lottery isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Kelly Rogers likely had a similar outlook as after winning over 1.8 million pounds at the age of only 16, her what? life was How? also ruined. How can you buy lottery tickets at 16? I thought you have to be 18 for them. I might be being stupid. Initially, Kelly stated, I will not- I've never bought a lottery ticket and I've never gambled. I'm not I'm not into that sort of stuff. I mean, I've never tried it, so I don't, I don't want to try it. I mean, lottery tickets aren't that bad. If you get a lottery ticket every so often, and neither is gambling, it can be fun. Or betting, I've just never been into betting. And I know betting's a, like, a thing that's ingrained in like sports, especially in the UK. And it's now been, I think it's now come to the US or what, if you want to say about it. But I've never done any of that kind of stuff. And I've just never had the urge to do it. Even though it would be sick to win it, the chances are so low. I just don't see any point in doing it. But that's, I guess, these, that's why these people are so 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 lucky and then there's these crazy stories about them losing all their money go wild and spend loads i'm gonna take some advice and see an accountant hopefully i'll make us all comfortable i want to help my oh, family but i won't change i just want a normal sad. home nothing posh i just want a normal car as well however as soon as she received the money kelly instead spent eleven thousand five hundred pounds on two boob jobs three hundred thousand pounds on clothes makeup and tattoos as well as eighty five thousand pounds on top of the range Three hundred thousand pounds on clothes, makeup, and tattoos. The boob job is fair enough. I mean, that's eleven k. That's a small portion. I mean, get all those things done if you want. I don't care. Three hundred thousand on clothes and makeup and tattoos. What? But still, there's a good 1.5 million left. What else could this go on? Sports cars. Kelly spent a further £250,000 on holidays to locations including Mexico and Euro Disney, £118,000 on gifts to former boyfriends, £190,000 in unreturned loans to friends and family members, and £50,500 on solicitor's fees. Oh, man. So she didn't even... I feel like some of these were just her trying to be a good person. A good person, you know? Ah, oh, no. She's just a young person who got money too soon. All of which being purchased while she was still in high school. Kelly did make a few smart purchases, such as an £180,000 bungalow and a £96,000 home for her mum. However, by the end of the year, Kelly was back to square one, being on welfare with only £2,000 left in her account. She, she was... since stated it was too much money. She was on welfare at the end of this time. Oh my days. Surely the the clothes haven't lost that much value. Just sell them back. Get a, get a good 50k or whatever. Like what? Money for someone so young. Even if you say your life won't change, it does and often not for the better. Yeah, I just wish I was a bit older at the time of winning it because I think at 16, you're still just a child and overnight, 
You've just got to grow up and become an adult. Which is probably why she's now an advocate for raising the UK's legal gambling age from 16 to 18. Kelly yeah, Rogers yeah. certainly spent her money poorly. However, at least she had the chance to spend it as 25-year-old Amanda Clayton from Detroit was no longer alive by the end of her spending spree. When Amanda won the million dollar jackpot back in 2011, Cocaine. it seemed as though her life had been changed overnight. However, her win quickly became controversial after the media learned that she was still collecting food stamps and benefit payments despite having won the lottery. Huh? Detroit woman is now the second lotto winner in the state to keep taking food stamps after hitting it big. And Amanda Clayton, who won a million bucks and took home a $700,000 lump sum, the 24-year-old says even though she now owns two homes, she figured she was still allowed to use a bridge card. After being confronted about the behavior, Amanda had the following to say. I thought that they would cut me off, but since they didn't, I thought maybe it was okay because I'm not working. And shortly thereafter, she was charged with two felony counts of welfare fraud and was ordered to pay back the $5,500 worth of food stamps she'd received. <laughs> While Amanda quickly paid the $5,500 back, she never got the chance to spend the rest of the money, as only six months later, she would unfortunately overdose in one of her two homes. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. That's just, that just sucks, man. So she bought home. She don't quite, I guess, would be a lot of people would see as a bit of a smarter thing. She's invested in something that she can at least sell in future or whatever. But yeah, I knew from the start it was going to be something like that. It's just, I don't know, you get this money and then you lose it. You're just going to end one way, man. It, it can do a lot to a person's mental, you know, mental state. So it's pretty wild. I remember reacting to one of these sorts of videos before and I didn't really think about the idea of how it could go wrong. But you can sort of see and understand the point of view of these people. Like, Just imagine how depressed you would feel after losing all this money. He says she was tormented by the fame and the problems that came with winning the lottery. Well, what's the point of having money if you're not going to have happiness? He says she didn't want the money anymore and bought things for her family and set up college funds for her children. He says she only had $67,000 of her winnings left. The end to Amanda what? Clayton's story was somewhat unexpected. However, a two-second glance at Ryan McGee is more than enough to predict that this lottery win would eventually end in disaster. After winning £6.4 million pounds back in 2008 at the age of 27, Mate. Ryan was placed on the Sunday Times Top 100 Rich List for young people. He purchased a luxury mansion in his home country of Ireland, which featured five bedrooms, an indoor swimming pool, a full champagne bar, and a two-car garage where he kept his Fair brand enough. new Ferrari 458 Italia. However, as you might expect, this is where things began to go terribly. Only three years after buying the Ferrari, Ryan slipped off the road, crashing the car into a field, mainly because he was driving in the snow. Locals were amazed Ryan was driving the Ferrari in that weather, especially when he had a more suitable race. Why are you using a Ferrari in these conditions, bro? Range Rover he could use. <laughs> the Ferrari was not understood to be running on winter tires, which, while costing around £4,400, hugely boost grip and handling in icy conditions. Ryan's property development business then dissolved, which was accompanied by a divorce from his wife and the sale of his luxury home. Then, two years later, Ryan McGee was pulled over driving an uninsured Ford Focus without a license. However, the most interesting part is that he had to claim legal aid, which is a service for those who are unable to afford a lawyer. Now, Ryan McGee was a complete idiot with his money. However, he still looks like Albert Einstein when compared to Martin Tot. When well, Martin and his wife worse? Kay won three million pounds back in 2001, they didn't go in to claim the prize because, well, they had no idea that they were winners. They purchased a ticket in passing, completely forgotten about it, and would only come to realize that they were the winners after hearing about the unclaimed prize over six months later. The main problem was that at some point, the ticket had been misplaced or thrown out completely. Despite frantically searching, the pair couldn't find their ticket, but were sure they had won because the jackpot numbers matched the ones they used every week. Computer records in their local Londis proved Kay really had purchased the ticket, and the thrilled pair rushed to tell lottery organiser Camelot to claim their prize. But they fell victim to a little-known rule, stating lost tickets must be reported within 30 days. Oh After 45 God. days of deliberation, Camelot told the devastated couple that they would not be collecting the jackpot, and as a result, the couple's marriage eventually came to an end. Fuck. We'd only known each Man. other for two years and the lottery ordeal quickly highlighted our differences. All we did was bicker. Sadly, both of us agreed we should split and Kay moved out. Man seems to have convinced himself that losing the ticket ended up being a good thing, having stated, for a long time I lost sight of who I was and what I believed in. But I can honestly say I'm glad I didn't get the three million now. There is no guarantee it would have brought me happy. I mean, you can say that, but don't, don't lie to yourself, bro. I can, maybe it makes you feel better about the whole situation, but Come on now, three million is just an extra three million. 
you know? Happiness. And nothing, if there's anyone nothing, else who would have agreed with this statement, it definitely would have been the most miserable lottery winner of all time, William Post. When William won a $16.2 million jackpot back in 1988, he had just $2.46 in his bank account and was able to purchase the lucky ticket by selling a ring for $40 to a local pawn shop. This, in conjunction with the time he'd spent in jail for cashing invalid checks, highlighted William Post's awful money management skills and acted as foreshadowing for how poorly his lottery win was eventually going to be spent. Only 84 days after receiving the $16.2 million, William Post had spent the entire fortune on a boat, a lease for a restaurant in Florida, a used car lot as well as a private jet. However, even after all of the money had been spent, Post took on a further $500,000 loan to purchase a mansion in Oil City, Pennsylvania. The problem was that William hadn't actually purchased the original ticket himself and had rather given the money to his girlfriend who had bought the winning ticket for him. Because of this, she was able to successfully sue him for one third of the winnings, meaning that Post now owed $5.4 million to his ex-girlfriend from the $16.2 million oh that he no my. longer had. Since Post was unable to make this payment, the judge ordered that his bank account be frozen until he was able to come up with the money. However, before he was able to sell enough stuff to pay the $5.4 million, William was arrested and ordered to serve a 6 to 24 month prison term for an assault charge from 6 years prior. Toward the end of his life, Post was on his 7th marriage with over a million dollars in debt and was getting by on food stamps at a job paying $450 per month. However, William Post still doesn't have the craziest lottery win story of all time. That title goes to Andrew Jackson Whitaker, whose life would change forever after winning $315 million back in 2000. That's, that is insane. How is there this much money to win in a lottery? What? 2002. Unlike almost everyone else in this video, Whitaker was actually quite successful prior to winning the lottery, having built up a net worth of over 17 million with the assistance of his construction company. And while this would imply that he was in a position to manage a large lottery win, this isn't what would happen. Whitaker instantly donated 10% of the winnings to churches, Christian groups, and spent a further 14 million establishing the Jack Whitaker Foundation, which provided free food and clothing for low income families in West Virginia. Obviously, you're doing God's work with all this money. Yes, I am. I'm helping a lot of people and I plan to help a lot more. He then drove back to the convenience store where he had purchased the ticket before giving the clerk a $44,000 check, a $123,000 house, He's and a brand a new man. Jeep Cherokee, which was followed oh by Whitaker God. buying himself a Lamborghini in which he'd drive around his neighborhood throwing money out of the window. After flaunting this wealth, his Lamborghini was broken into where thieves stole $545,000 in cash. However, this apparently wasn't much of a wake up call as his car was then broken into for the second time, resulting in the loss of a further $200,000 cash. Jack Whitaker's granddaughter passed away, his daughter then passed away, which was followed by a divorce with his wife. And now you've Bro, lost how your unlucky can you be? Daughter. You're about to be divorced from your wife. Where does this ever end? Leading him to state that he had lost everything. I pretty much lost everything I held dear in my life. You got lots of money. Money is money money has never meant anything to me. You have to have money to exist in this world, but money money doesn't rule the world. Money money is not what makes people happy. And that he wished he had never purchased the lottery ticket in the first place. My wife had said she wished that she'd torn the ticket up. Well I wish that we had torn the ticket up too. I just don't like what I've become. Bro, that was a sad way to end it, man. He seemed like a good person who just had good intentions and then maybe we just wasn't really as aware about his like sort of money situation as he should have been, but damn, that's pretty that's pretty sad stuff. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. That's a bit of a wild thing to say after that. But yeah, if you want more of these types of reactions to Sunny V2, let me know in the comments. And yeah, until next time, like subscribe. Peace.